Developing youth is probably the best part of career mode. Without it, you might as well just be playing in kickoff. However, sometimes it might seem like those good young players are refusing to improve. Today, we'll be looking at and ranking the five best ways to grow players overall, backed up by a bunch of experiments I've run on FIFA 23. Sure, there are some short-term fixes that can grow a player's overall. Changing their position is one that I think of straight away, but we're going to be looking at some long-term ways to make sure your players always meet their potential. To test exactly what's the best way to keep players improving, I simulated 5 seasons with this group of players. Every single one of them has 64 overall and 80 potential and is between 16 and 21 years old. I won't fill out the video with boring spreadsheets this time, but keep an eye on the video for some of the most interesting information that I've found. Going into this video, there was actually 4 areas of career mode that I thought could impact how fast a player develops. We'll be looking at loans, development plans, training and how game time actually affects how fast a young player will develop. So we'll be starting off with loans. I mean, loaning a player out makes sense. It happens all the time in real life. A bigger club will send a younger player out to get some game time in a smaller league. However, you might have noticed that's not really how it works on FIFA. Unless the player is loaned out to the same league that you're in, they won't actually get any game time. Instead, they got a randomized boost throughout their loan. You might have seen random players getting boosted from the mid 60s to the high 70s over the course of a single loan. The amount of growth from loaning a player out is actually fairly random. I couldn't see any patterns depending on what league they go to, how good the club was, or how important they would be to that club. It really did seem fully random, sometimes they'd go by 3 points, sometimes around 10. Of course, it's not only benefits the loaning a player out. When they return, their potential can either increase or decrease by a couple of points, something I guess is supposed to show how well the loan went. If they perform well out on loan, it does make sense their potential would go up. If they were playing badly, then of course it should go down, but the fact that you can't tell how a loan is going turns this into a bit of an unpredictable change on potential. A young player should always improve on their overall while they're going out on loan, but do keep an eye on their potential when they return. The last point I want to make about loans is that it seems like older players actually get more of a boost. Players that went out on loan at 21 would increase more than players that were 17. Maybe this is to do with their overall catching up to where it should be based on their potential and their age, I'm not too sure, but it was something that I noticed. Development plans are the most obvious way of improving a player. Leaving a player unbalanced means your player will grow to be a bit more well-rounded, but because of how player overalls are actually calculated, they will grow slower on a balanced development plan. A striker with 99 finishing but 60 for every other stat will actually be 70 rated. This is because finishing is one of the most highly weighted stats for a striker. You can do the same if you have every single one of the defensive stats be 99 but everything else be 40, your centre back will still be a 78 overall centre back. If you can pick out the right plan to actually improve the weaknesses in a player's game and boost the stats that matter to their overall, they can actually improve really fast. On average, if you pick the right one for a player, they can grow by about 6 overall per season. This might not seem like a lot compared to loans, but this is for players who aren't playing in any games, therefore have poor morale and form. If you can actually play your players and keep them happy, then they can actually improve by up to 10 points a season just from playing them and choosing the right development plan. Of course, you can also throw a player into group training. With a max of 11 players being selected to train, half of the players in our squad would actually only be on development plans. This might make you wonder, what's the difference between just development plans and development plans and group training? The answer is probably a bit more than you think, although it's going to be different to what you're imagining. Over the course of a season, having a player with both a development plan and doing group training will actually get them to grow at around 8 overall per season. However, to make things clear, group training actually has no direct impact on how fast the player is growing. Instead, the training increases sharpness, which in turn increases form because you'll play better with this player. Form is then used to decide how much a player will actually develop via their development plan. This means the four thumbs that you can see in Squad Hub are actually one of the most important things to take into account when you're trying to develop a player a bit faster. Of course, one of these thumbs is for game time, so surely that will also actually improve players. Game time is often actually thought to be one of the biggest factors to developing players, especially in real life. However, from what I found, game time only impacts form, which of course is used to determine how much a player will grow on the development plan. All that truly matters is having a player with high form on a development plan. Even age does not make a difference. The ages 16 to 21, every age grew at roughly the same rate. So it's important you don't ignore highly rated players just because they might be in their 20s. 
One little trick that I worked out while making this video is that you can actually basically work out if a player can reach their potential before you even buy them. If you know their potential, maybe from their status saying something like exciting prospect or potential to be special, you can then subtract their age from 30 and then times the number you get by 6. So for example, if you find a player with 95 potential who's 20 years old, they can grow for 10 years at 6 overall per year. This means that as long as they're over 35 overall, the chances are they will actually reach their potential thanks to their ability to grow by 60 overall points. If they're 25 years old, they need to be at least 65 overall because they can only grow by 30. This is just a rough number, but of course players can grow slightly more, slightly less, and some of them might grow a bit older while some of them stop developing at 28. Honestly, going into this video, I did think there'd be more than one aspect of the game would actually impact how fast players develop. It turns out, all that really matters is having a player with high form on a development plan. Age doesn't really make that much of a difference. If they're between 16 and 21, thanks to dynamic potential, I think you can get them basically up to any overall on FIFA 23. Also, don't ignore high rated players just because they're in their 20s, because they can still develop very, very quickly. So to answer the question at the start of this video and in the title, developing young players in FIFA 23 requires a combination of a development plan, training and form. Loaning a player out can lead to some growth but it is a little bit random, you're never quite sure exactly what you're going to get from a loan. Development plans are by far the fastest way of improving players. I think it is theoretically possible that loans can be faster, but it is a little bit random and occasionally you will only get 1 or 2 points, where in other occasions you will get the full 10. Group training is almost pointless honestly, the only thing it affects is sharpness and form, and game time only impacts form. All of that time that you spent getting A grades on all the trainings that you do every single year doesn't actually do too much on FIFA 23. It's also important to keep in mind that player growth is dependent on form and development plans, not solely game time or age. By considering all of these factors, I think every single one of your young players can achieve their full potential and can help you win more games. So finally, let's talk about ranking which one of them is the most important to the least important. Well, we've obviously already figured out development plans are by far the most important thing to do for a young player. I think loans are probably second, although this depends if they're good enough to get into your first team or not. You can basically get a guaranteed plus 7 if you're developing them right while playing them and getting them good ratings. If they're not good enough to actually get good ratings in your league, then loans are the way to go. Game time is kind of important, but only if you're getting good ratings, so I will put that third on the list. And then finally, group training is basically pointless, by far the most pointless part of all of developing your youth, so don't even bother getting A ratings in my opinion, all it will do is help them keep a little bit more sharp. I hope you enjoyed today's video, I've got two more on the screen in a minute so check one of those out if you're interested. If you aren't already, please do consider subscribing or becoming a channel member so you'll be helping out the channel a huge amount. But thank you all for watching, like the video if you enjoyed it, I'll see you soon and goodbye.